everyone, it's Lauren from Pink Bird Originals. If you're watching this video today, the chances are you're interested in getting into machine embroidery and potentially starting a home business or any other kind of business that involves an embroidery machine. I've made this video today to demonstrate the Happy Japan 12 needle embroidery machine and why I purchased it for my home business. YouTube videos I get an awful lot of messages asking about my embroidery machines and so I thought I'd make this video just to cover some of the common questions I get asked and also hopefully provide you with a little bit more information about this particular machine. Um, so in this video today we're going to be going over some basic information about the machine, we're going to be uploading a design onto the machine and actually stitching it out I'm going to be pointing out some of its flaws and some of its drawbacks, but then also going to be covering some really cool features. And to start off, it's worth mentioning that this is the Happy Japan Voyager or the HCS2. This is actually um, an older model now. There's a new model on the market now. I believe it's called the HCS3. So just bear that in mind if you're going to buy this machine brand new, it will be slightly different to this machine which I'm talking about in my review today. The HCS2 is considered to be a compact embroidery machine. I think it weighs about 47 kilograms. So it is a little bit lighter than some of the other multi needles that are on the market. And because of its weight, I was actually able to put these two machines in an upstairs bedroom. So they are considered to be the more portable machines on the market, but you'd still need somebody to help you move it around the house. I could not move this by myself. You need a friend, a muscular friend. Another key feature of this machine is that there's no bulbous legs sticking out in front of the embroidery machine. In my business, I embroider on the backs of denim jackets a lot. And sometimes you find having things in front of the machine can interfere with the movement of the embroidery machine wherein the jackets might get all tangled up and it just results in the jacket design being damaged or ruined and it just causes a lot of problems. With this machine, with there being nothing sticking out in front of the machine, the jacket just drapes over the arm like that and it makes for a much more smoother embroidery process on larger pieces. This is the largest embroidery hoop that the 12 needle Voyager comes with. It is about 29 centimeters by 29 centimeters in size and it's a square which is great for versatility within your designs because I know on other machines, for example, the Brother, um, the sewing field is quite narrow. I think it's uh, 20 centimetres, which would come to about here, by 300 centimetres. And that kind of limits the sort of projects you can make. With this square hoop, you'll find there's a lot more versatility in the things you can design. If you'd like to see the other video I've made where I've actually compared um, a 10 needle Brother machine to this machine, I'll put the link down in the description below. Unlike some other industrial machines out there that are made with plastic parts, Happy Japan still make their embroidery machines with uh, steel and so it's a very durable, heavy duty machine that should hopefully have a very long lifetime. If I just bring you guys a little bit closer to see, don't mind all the dust on my machine, um, Happy Japan also recommend that you use metal bobbins uh, rather than pre-wound bobbins and so each 12 needle embroidery machine also comes with its own bobbin winder as you can see here where you can wind your own bobbins and so maximize your potential for great quality embroidery. And that's just a short list of all of the physical features that drew me to this machine. Now I'm going to show you what it's like to actually upload a design onto the embroidery machine and stitch it out. In today's video, I decided we're going to stitch out one of my goldfish bag patches. After turning on the embroidery machine by the switch at the side, uh, you have the opportunity to select what hoop you want to use. Um, but for today, we're going to stick with the large square hoop because I want to create as many embroidery patches as possible. Then you can hit next. The pantograph arm then moves. And then you're taken to a home screen that looks like this. To upload a design onto your embroidery machine, you take a USB stick and you insert it at the side of the machine. 
you hit the shapes icon on the bottom right hand corner of the screen where it takes you to another menu and then if you select this option here you see you either have an option to connect your pc which i haven't done at this time or you can hit the usb icon and it takes you to all of the files saved in your USB. So I'm going to head down to my goldfish bag, which is here. I tap on the design I want. And then once it's finished loading, this box will come up and you hit complete. You hit OK. And it takes you back to the home screen by tapping on the home button in the bottom corner there. When you hit OK, you're taken back to your home screen. And as you can see, there's a preview of your design here, but all the colors are wrong. So this is how you set up colors on your embroidery machine to match the color thread you've placed on your needles to be sure that your embroidery patch stitches out in the colors you want it to be. So first of all, you're going to select the change colors option, which is here. And it takes you to this screen where you've got a preview on the left hand side and the numbers one to 12, which represent your needles. This little block of color on each side here represents what color is on each needle. And this row at the top here represents what each section of the design is currently selected. So you can see as I'm flicking between each section of design is highlighting a different part of the design on the preview. Now, at the moment, I've set up my machine so that my silver thread is on needle one, my blue thread is on needle two, uh, orange is on needle three, yellow is on needle four, I've got my dark outline colour on needle six, and over, all the way on the other side of the machine, on needle nine, yeah, needle nine, that's my red. And these are the colours I want to use to stitch out my goldfish. But as you can see on the screen here, the colours currently showing do not match what is actually on the needle. So, for example, these are all leftover colours from my previous design, where I had a green on needle number one, a pink on needle number two, and so on. So what I need to do now, in order to give myself an accurate view of what this design is going to look like, I need to choose colours that correspond with what is on the needles. So on needle number one, I've got a silver thread. I hit the little uh, pink palette icon on the side and this screen comes up. Again, you can see the numbers one to 12 and they represent your needles. So I want to choose colors that correspond with the threads that are on each needle. So on needle number one, I said, and you can see in the corner of the screen here, that I've put my silver thread on needle number one. At the minute, that's showing green. So I'm going to change that by tapping on that thread spool and I'm confronted with a colour palette. If you can't quite find a shade to match your knees in this colour palette, you can also expand the colour palette and you see there's a further selection of shades here. But we're going to go back to the basic colour palette for the meantime and I'm going to select silver. And when I hit OK, you'll see that number one now has changed to silver. And I'm going to do this for all of the threads that I've changed on the machine. I'm going to select their corresponding colours. So the thread on needle number two is blue. So I'm going to select blue. On number three, it's orange. So I'm going to select orange. Uh, number four was already yellow. So that's fine. Nine is already red and I already have my dark color selected on number six. So I don't need to change these. I just need to click OK. And now you can program what section of the design you'd like to be stitched by which needle. So this part here represents the bag. So I'm going to select needle one. This yellow highlight here represents the water in the bag, so I'm selecting needle two. I wanted this part of my fish design to be a yellowish color, and this part to be orange, and his top head and eye to be red. And lastly, I wanted an outline to go around the bag. And then once I've corresponded my color palette to match with my needles. I then press the home screen 
and you can see the preview on the side shows the colours I've picked for each section of the design. If I wanted to change the position of the design in my large square embroidery hoop, I would tap on this green icon with the hoop in it here. And you can see, here's your hoop, and here is your design positioned within that hoop. If you just wanted to centre the design within the hoop, you'd tap the P, the P centre icon, which brings your design to the middle of the hoop. Or if you wanted to position your design in a particular place, you can use these arrows to move the design within the hoop. But as you can see, that was quite slow and really only meant for minor adjustments. If you wanted to move the design quickly, these uh, FF and the little green bars, which almost look like Wi-Fi bars on the side, represent how fast you want to move the design with one being the slowest and three being the fastest. So if I just tap three, and you can see the design moves very quickly. Alternatively, you can just tap on the hoop like so, and the design moves. But I'm gonna put it in the center for now. Then once you're happy with the position of the design and you're ready to stitch it out, you just press home and you can hit start. The embroidery machine has a top stitching speed of 1000 stitches per minute and this can be adjusted as you're stitching out the design. You don't have to like stop and then restart. The machine isn't currently running. I thought I'd record this earlier to present to you while the machine is stitching out our goldfish back design. I thought this would be a good opportunity to go through some of the things I find a little bit annoying about this machine. Starting up here. Sometimes, especially if your tensions aren't that great or if you're re-threading the machine and these threads are kind of hanging a little bit loose at the back, the thread can get wound around these little thread guys at the top here on the thread stand and that can sometimes pull the thread out of the needle below because they get stuck. It's not the end of the world but it is a little bit annoying and it is a problem that could be easily solved if the manufacturers just thought to maybe add some little plastic tubes going from the thread to the tension guide, other people have done it. The next thing, the sort of a petty issue really, but when you compare it to say Brother Machines that have the full catalog of Madeira colors, when you select from your color palette, even when you select from the uh, larger, more elaborate color palette, if you really look at it, there aren't that many shades of colour in here and a lot of these colours are very similar. So that kind of makes it a little bit tricky sometimes when you're choosing colours for your design and you don't quite have the right colours that you want to use. It seems very silly that you've got like all of these shades of blue that are nearly identical but you only have like say one or two shades of grey and you'll see it here as well. These shades of grey all look very similar. I don't know, maybe I'm colorblind, but to me, I just feel they could do something a little bit better with this color palette to add in more variations of colors. Another slight technical grievance is Happy's trace feature. When you trace the outline of the embroidery design, it only goes to the extremes of the design. It isn't a true trace of the design's shape. Okay, you could argue by doing it this way, you are never going to stitch on top of another design accidentally if you're trying to fit more than one design in your hoop at once. Okay, but say you did want to fit more than one design in your hoop to save on material and be a little bit more conservative in your production, then having a more accurate trace or being able to see an image of the patch inside this outline rather than just the extreme outline of the patch itself would help you fit more designs in your larger embroidery hoops and increase production. But let's not get too caught up on the negatives because for every negative there is a really cool feature on this machine that you probably didn't even know you needed until now. For example, this machine is so easy to customise. 
did you know it has a fine mode so if you're doing like fine text for example with really thin thread you can actually set up your machine so that it's at the optimum kind of operating settings for you to get the best results operating with that fine thread the same goes for if going back to denim because i embroider on a lot of denim where is it you can actually choose the embroidery weight and set your machine into heavy mode so that it is adjusted to embroider on heavier materials like denim and leather for example when you upload a design using your usb stick that design automatically saves to Happy's hard drive. And as you can see here, I've got all of the embroidery patterns I need saved into my Happy embroidery machine. So the next time I need to make something, I don't have to spend time rushing around looking for my USB stick to re-upload the design. And lastly, it's the overall speed of this machine that really impresses me. Uh, I haven't actually owned any other embroidery machines aside from my Happies and my brother embroidery machine, but I can say compared to the brother multi-needle embroidery machine, this machine is so quick. Not just the stitching out things, it's the little things that all add up. Like for example, making tie-offs, cutting the thread, changing the needles, and then just starting off again. This machine is very quick at doing things like that, and by saving on time overall, you're actually saving money. And that's a, that's a massive feature of this machine that appeals to me. So here is the hoop of completed embroidery patches. Um, I'm very pleased with the quality of them. There's no uh, loose or loopy stitches. It took me about one hour to stitch out nine patches. I sell these for about four pounds a patch, so uh, nine in an hour, four pound is 36 pounds. So if you look at that, that's 36 pounds an hour, really, because uh, embroidery thread is really pennies. So obviously speed is a big factor. You can attribute a profit in embroidery and also the amount of patches or projects your embroidery machine is capable of completing in one hour. And on that note, that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed this long video of going over some of the Happy Japan's basic features. I'm not kidding you, I could talk about this machine all day. I really do enjoy using it. It's a great workhorse and in my opinion, good value for money. Like I said at the start of the video, this isn't the most recent model available and actually I've got some exciting news. Uh, the newest model, the HCS3, is actually going to be delivered to my house very soon. And so I'm going to be posting a demo video of that machine and highlighting some of the differences between the older model and the newer model, all the things they've improved, anything they've taken away. So if you'd like to see that video, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification button and then YouTube will let you know when that video comes out. So thank you for watching everybody and I'll see you next time.